Hello, and we are back for episode two of my new unnamed series. If you have any idea what I should call this series, uh, I was toying around with a few, but I can't really come up with one that I like. Uh, leave a comment below about what I should call this. Basically, what I'm doing, if you haven't seen my first video, is starting from the basics of nothing. I'm going to ignore anything that I have in this account that could help me out to show you when you start the game how you you don't need to buy the big ships the expensive ships that are in the game you just can earn the money and work your way up while playing the game and having a good time a little bit of a, a role play series uh, my character I've decided uh, is going to be starting out on Lorville the dirtiest dustiest planet but actually one of my favorites and uh, and just starting out doing a little bit of jobs earning some cash uh, working their way up to the point of being able to to upgrade some things, maybe upgrade the ship, getting some some better equipment, doing some rentals, and just trying out different ways how to to earn money. Uh, my main way to make money has always been, for the most part, mining. Although I did start with delivery missions, which is what I think I'm going to do here. Uh, a little bit of cargo running, but when there was a lot more server instability, I kind of gave up on running cargo because it's quite easy to to lose a lot of the the money that you've earned. But we're just going to give it a go. So when this starts out, I will be in my bed in my new hab in L16, or is it L19? I forgot. We'll have to check. And uh, we'll go from there. And we are here in our hab. Uh, as far as habs go, not the, the nicest, not the fanciest, but uh, I'm kind of happy with the, the size. The, uh, the, uh, the, the space that you get for a hab, odd place to put a bed in the middle. So just tap Y and you get out of bed. Sometimes in Lorville I find there's a little bit of a, a glitch where you, uh, you, you get out of bed and it puts you right back in bed. But this time we seem to be quite well. We've got a lot of things here. Uh, I can see a little cardboard box here, something stored on top, uh, a little desk for writing at. Some of these things open. Uh, not really a lot of interactivity with the items yet. But uh, yeah, we are in Lorville. There is one thing that I could suggest here. You can see it says op uh, optimal hydration level achieved down in the left corner. But if you're ever a little low on hydration, you can make coffee. Although there is no coffee cup in there at the moment. So making coffee right now is just going to potentially spray coffee all onto the ground. But uh, a lot of times you'll start out here, there'll be a coffee cup there. You can grab that coffee cup. If you want to drink it though, you'll notice that I'm wearing a helmet. I do not have the ability to drink coffee at the moment. So what you need to do is hold F and then right click and unequip helmet. And you can unequip the helmet. Now Lorville is a planet, uh, or a city I should say, on the planet Hurston, which you can do this without really worrying too much because uh, now that your helmet's off, you can go on a planet surface, you can breathe. This is a life supporting planet, not too cold, a little bit dry, a little bit arid, but you can you can survive in here. So in the habs here, you can see it's, it's nighttime now, so we are in the habs, we're on the upper floor of this level of the habs. Uh, you can see there's many different levels of the habs. You can start out in any of these random rooms. There's a window out here that you can look out over at Tisa Spaceport. A little bit of a uh, dirty window, but as you can see, this is not the cleanest of planets. Uh, this, this city here, full of garbage, full of trash. So if you're up top, head down, or, or stay up, but if you're down here, come up these stairs, and you're going to head to the elevator. The elevator is on the second floor of all the Habs. Coming over here, get into the elevator, and we're just going to today uh, maybe do a quick delivery mission. So what we do is we head down to ground floor, so hold F, scroll down to see ground floor and select it, and we are going to be going to the main entrance and head outside. Now this city, very much like Area 18, a lot of the city scape is outside. So you're going to take a left here and come out, and we are now out to the open sky. You can look out over the spaceport, uh, you can see some of the trash being uh, dumped out of these tubes here and to the ground. A lot of the industry, a lot of security here, just kind of keeping things going. Uh, the whole idea is that most of the workforce, most of the people working you see, are in debt to to Herson Dynamics. Uh, Herson Dynamics is the uh, 
the uh, weapons manufacturer, one of them in this game. As you can see, there's still the Invictus going on, so there's a, a flyby and there's the tours of the Javelin still available. But we, uh, we're too busy, we're working. No, uh, no working vending machines yet. A lot of dirt you can see on the floor. Look at all the detail. Look at all like the piles of dirt all blown up against the walls. You could go to uh, taking another left, heading up there, you're going to head to the trams. Then that'll, that'll get you around to where you need to go. But if you go this way and down to the right, this is the admin office. And a lot of the, the stuff you need to sell, the smaller items, you need to go to admin as opposed to the central business district in order to, to sell the items. So through here there's terminals that you can sell items here. And then there is also, you can see, Tammany and Sons, which is one of the areas. There's a there's a bar down here, we can find some NPCs, there's a various little shops to check out, but Tammany and Sons. That's the bar, and there's Reclamation Disposal. I think I went the wrong way. I think I need to go th this way. There they are. This is what you're looking for to start out if you want to get a multi-tool. The multi-tool is used for salvage when it's uh, implemented. There's a tractor beam attachment. There's a health attachment, I believe, coming up. There's the mining attachment, and if we're going to do some mining, it's very important. So you come in here, and you these these kiosks where you can buy some different items. Uh, so under, I believe, miscellaneous, we can have uh, mining heads and mining modules. These are all for the prospector ship, which we don't have right now. Supplies, med pen and oxy pen. Med pen can, do, can be used for healing, and oxy pen is great for if you're running out of oxygen in your suit and you need to, to give yourself a little more oxygen. Different clothing, nothing that we really need here at the moment. Uh, there is some interesting different helmets and hats that you could wear. Uh, anything with open face you can wear uh, on a uh, place like this, on a planet that you can breathe, otherwise you need something with a closed face. Uh, there's even these bag helmets that you'll see some people wearing just to keep the, the clean air from going, uh, or, or the dusty air from going in your lungs. We have various undersuits and clothing you can wear, some weapons, these are magazines and, and grenades and different things you need. And then we have armor, and so the armor helmets are various ones here. Different clothing shops have different styles of armor and helmets available. Uh, you can look at even like full suits, torso, legs. All of these have storage in them as well, so having something with storage in them will allow you to uh, to gather some items. You can just back away if you want to get out of those. So we're going to look for the mining tool, which will be up here. So the gray cap multi-tool and the mining head. If we look at here, we can have the, the mining, the uh, gray cap multi-tool we have the mining attachment, and then we have the tractor beam attachment, or the torch attachments. I don't see the tractor beam attachment here at the moment. Now I'm going to double check that I haven't already bought one because I can't remember what I have on this account. So hitting F1, and I go to Equipment Manager, and then we go Utility, and I actually do have the multi tool and the mining attachment already. So. I don't need to buy one because I do have one. So if you needed to buy one, you're looking at the outcome, you're looking at this being about 300 for the cutter attachment, about 350, I think you're both about 350, 300, 350 for the mining attachment. So I would get the mining attachment for 350 and the multi-tool, oh, I hit the wrong button, the multi-tool for another 500. So you're looking at about a, under a thousand for something that you can use to gain money. You're definitely going to need something with storage, so you're going to have to pick up some armor as well. If you're going to go anywhere hot, you get this suit here. The Pembroke armor. If you're going to go to anywhere cold, you're going to have to find the Novikov armor. This here, as you can see, quite a bit more, 10,000. So you're going to have to do some work in order to earn that money first. You could get other suits here. They all have storage on them. But this one here is the one that will allow you to go to a planet that is quite hot and survive. So that one will become useful later on. But we're going to keep going. We're going to head to the trams. So if we had taken a left out of our uh, HABs, we'd be coming through that doorway here. And you come up and down over this hump here. And we're going to be heading to the trams. So we're going to go to uh, Spaceport Lane. And that's uh, the Spaceport Line is where we're going to get our ship. One of the things you can also buy, another helmet here, 
these ridiculous big helmets, they were sold in Tanmay Suns also. Uh, the idea is that those are to give you a little bit of fresh air walking around this planet to kind of filter out. Very good during a pandemic, maybe I should get one myself. I could wear that around. Do you think I can go to a shop wearing this? I don't think a lot of people would think anything of it. Uh, still kind of an issue with AI. Some of them will sit down, some of them will uh, stand on seats. They don't seem to understand. Maybe sitting is like the new, the new, uh, the new smoking. So now everyone wants to stand in the future. Maybe that's what's happening. So the tram should be here momentarily. There it is. So in this tram, we're going to be heading out towards the spaceport, and I'm going to show you where, when you have money, is one place that you can buy some ships. Uh, there are some different ship ports where you can buy different ships. There are rental places where you can rent ships as well. But we are going to go and purchase the Aurora with the money that I have. So in this spaceport, once you get here, it's very similar to where we just left. You can't really get lost. There's only really one direction to go following the exit signs. It does snake back and forth a bit. If you ever find yourself you're walking too slow, most wheel up. That gives you your maximum walking speed, so most wheeling down. This line here, the green line, is a central business district line. Taking this will bring you to the Lorville headquarters, or the Hurston Dynamics headquarters, I should say. But we are heading up the stairs. You'll see some triangular lights in the ceiling. That'll help you know that you're on the right track. So once you see them, you know that you're at the spaceport. So there are the triangular lights. You can see them up there. And if you get to those, here are the kiosks to get your ships. And if you're waiting for anything, uh, there's been a few times where I've been waiting for uh, uh, an insurance claim, for instance. This is always great to kind of sit here, stand here, and look out the windows and enjoy the view. Any people arriving in ships to come and land will be landing out in front of here, so you can see them come down into ships and landing in the hangars. There you go. So this ship here is 1.2 million, roughly, to buy this ship. A fairly expensive ship to buy, but there are ships for sale. Ships for sale up here in the New Deal. Now, there are larger ships for sale outside. You can see here we have uh, a Mustang, one of the other starter ships right here. We have the one of the Constellations, and you can enter these ships and take a look around if you want. So we have the Constellation here, which you can take a look at. Uh, we have the Hammerhead over here, another large ship you can take a look at. But we're going to head inside New Deal, which you'll recognize the New Deal uh, uh, storefront, which I used as kind of an image for, for advertising this series so far. And inside, eventually, one of the good money makers in the game, the Prospector, a single seater, one person mining ship very good for, for earning UEC in the game. And then we have the Aurora over here, and this is what we're going to buy. So I'm going to see how much this costs. So this ship here, as opposed to 1.2 million for the other ship, this one here is 245,500 UEC. Looking at how much I've got, I've got a little over 300,000 here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to purchase this ship. You can purchase this ship by looking at it, pressing buy, and confirming. I now own an Aurora in-game. That's how easy it is to get ships in the game. Instead of having to buy them with real money, just buy it at a kiosk. You can also use this kiosk over here, and you could buy some ships. Someone is currently using the kiosk at the moment, this person here, so you can't really use it to, uh, to buy any ships. All right, so we are back. And if you look now, I've transferred most of my UEC away. And we're going to start out imagining that if I start out with the 5,000 that we would have a bit left after buying some food, after buying our Grey Cat multi-tool and a little bit of armor. I don't know what I have as far as armor on me, but right now we're not going to need it. We just have our base spacesuit on. Uh, I don't believe we have any weapons on. So 3,108 Alpha UEC. So that is going to be our starting amount. And we're going to just try to earn our way up to getting around maybe 5 million for an MSR by the time that uh, uh, Crusader's Planets, uh, or sorry, Crusader's City Orson is ready to go. So now that we are at the Vehicle Retrieval Console, we're going to ignore 
some of the ships we have. The Avenger Titan, right now, everyone has as part of the Free Fly Week. So once the Free Fly Week is over, that's going to go away. We have the Carrick and the Hornet. These are all rentals that I was checking out during the, uh, the Free Fly event, the expo that's going on. And the Nomad, which was my starting ship. I'm going to go with the Aurora LX and hit Retrieve. Once I hit Retrieve, my ship is going to show up in the vehicle hangars. So now we are in Hangar 9. Now if I was to look out the front window, we can see down there, Hangar 9 is where my ship is. So if we're looking at the hangars, it's this hangar right here, directly below is my ship. So that's where, if someone was standing here, they would watch me take off and fly away as I left. I'm going to head uh, 180 from the kiosks towards hangar elevators, which are right here. So these ones here will work for domestic flights somewhere. It's not really implemented in the game, but what you're doing here is any of these elevators, call elevator, and wait. If you ever forget where your ship is, look for it in your heads up display. You can see that it's there, hangar nine. So we're gonna again, hold F, roll to hangar nine. Someone is coming to mind. Hello? No need to hop my elevator. If you ever have a bigger ship, watch out if someone's coming with you because they may try to get in your ship. But I'm not expecting anyone to try to get into my Aurora. Because I will see them. Well, they are there though. So get into my ship. Enter ship. Hold F on the pilot seat. Hit R. And that powers up your ship. Now, a lot of times you don't have landing service on one of your MFDs. With the Aurora, it seems to always show up in the top corner here. So you can either hit menu and put it on to the comms if it's not there or hit F11 friends and choose landing services that way. I usually tend to use the screens because then you can watch what you're doing while you're waiting. Once they open up the hangars you can see the doors are opening up. If I hit F4 and hold Z I can pan around we can see that the doors are opening well sort of they're very high up. So what I'm going to do is hold space until we start flying or going up and raise my landing gear and just you can use F4 if you need to see to make sure that you are not going to get hurt holding Z will allow you to pan around hold Z will be moving your mouse because if you don't your ship will start moving as opposed to your view inside your ship you can see something showing you your angle both left and right as well as based on the horizon. Zero is flat. So I'm going to hold space again, go a little higher. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to nose up and push forwards with W, and that will get me out of the spaceport. So you can see we are flying, and away we go. So there's our hangar. There's where we were. And if we're looking right ahead, you can see some of the buildings. Those are the buildings that we were in looking out of those windows out onto the spaceport. So we're going to go a little bit farther. You can see our altitude right now climbing. We're at 1500 feet, uh, maybe it's meters, let's say 1500 meters, so 1.5 kilometers up, 1.6 heading out. If you're wanting to know if you're in space or not, you can always hit B. When you hit B, you can see all the places you can jump to, currently all red. If they're all red, that means that you are still within the planetary atmosphere and you're not able to jump. You could still aim at them to know what you're aiming towards. So Everest Harbor, 240.1 kilometers away, is a place we can head to. Everest Harbor is a station fly that's flying around the orbit of the planet and uh, a good place to, to stop at if you don't want to try landing at uh, Lorville.
So we're going to keep going up a little bit. So as you notice, I'm not moving fast right now, 21 meters a second. If I mouse wheel up, I'm increasing the maximum speed that the ship can fly. So now if I look at the speed I'm moving, you'll notice a huge difference in the speed that I'm leaving the planet. So I've increased my maximum speed. As the maximum speed goes over the line that's right here, your ability to turn and control your ship is reduced. But that is the only thing that this line signifies. If you're fast in that line, it's not damaging your ship, it's just affecting your maximum speed uh, turning abilities. So keeping it maximum right there will allow you to have the maximum speed to turn and operate. Where going faster and faster and faster, which in space you can hit your maximum speed all the way at the top. Uh, in a straight line will save you time and help you get out of the atmosphere. So we climb up now, we're at about five and a half kilometers into the air. Uh, we still can't jump because all the markers have shown up as blue. If you only see one marker, that means you have a destination set and locked into your system, but right now I'm just using it as a uh, a way to tell whether or not I am flying or not, or sorry, if I am in the atmosphere or not. Obviously, if I don't know I'm flying, that's not a good sign because that means I'm probably going to smash into something. So I'm going to hit shift for a little bit of an afterburner. That's going to increase our speed a bit. We are now out of the planetary atmosphere. And now you notice calibration went all the way to the top. If I hold B, down as opposed to tapping it that engages the warp to whatever I'm locked on which in this case was Everest Harbor so we are now at full speed so it's taking me a bit longer to slow down if I want to slow down quicker I can hold X and X will slow you down quick as an emergency brake however can also potentially uh, overheat your systems another thing you can do is hit V V turns coupled on and off if you're looking down here again CPLD is coupled. If that is lit up like this, if I hit forwards and let that go, it'll slow me down to zero. Hit forwards again, let go, slow me down to zero. If I take V and hit forwards and let go, now I will coast. You're just uncoupled. If I turn sideways, you'll notice that this little marker, this marker here, is showing me the direction my ship is traveling, even though I am traveling facing sideways. If I hit V again, it will slow down my ship and stop my movement. There's also C. C will move until it gets to where your speed is set with this line here. So if I mouse up, it'll go up. If I mouse down, it'll go down. But you're using thrust and keeping yourself at that speed. Hitting C to turn cruise control off again will bring you back. As you can see, we are now in Everest Harbor's zone of influence. If I if I hit this, it's the same as using F11. It's going to request a landing. So it says proceed to sign landing bay. There's my sign landing view there. Flying towards it, hit N. N will turn my landing gear on. You can see the, the light side gear has lit up. And I'm going to mouse wheel down a little bit, use the mouse wheel to control my speed as I'm coming in. I don't want to come in so fast that I can't slow down when I get close. And I'm going to slide slowly towards the landing pad. This is where you have to make sure that you are not uncoupled from flight. Otherwise you will try to stop and you will just coast right into a building. You can also hit A and D to side by side to slide a bit. You can use the Q and E to adjust your speed. Notice it says halt velocity. That means those ships there are wanting to scan me. Always stop. If you do not stop when they tell you to stop and remain stationary until they tell you can go, you will be fined. So this is a very important thing. Told me I'm free to go. I can now continue my landing. This is something you have to be used to in this game is that sometimes you're going to be stopped and scanned by military ships. If you have illegal cargo on you, you are definitely going to get fined, possibly go to jail in this game, which then you have to work your way out of or wait a certain amount of time to get out of. 
We are now getting closer to landing. You can see this blue mark here. Two ways to land. If you remember uh, when I was landing in Lorville, I just dropped down and landed. But I'm going to show you here how to do an auto land. So for auto land, you're bringing your ship close to this blue square. As close as you can. Once you are over the blue square, just hold N. And if it doesn't let you land, go lower. You gotta be close. Hold N. There we go. Auto land is happening. My hands are off all controls and it is landing it for me. So you don't have to land manually. If you're close enough, it will do the auto land. So we are back in Everest Harbor in the station overlooking Hurston down below. Look at this planet. Look at how beautiful this is. So stations, very similar to cities, with the added benefit of no trams or trains. Very easy to find your way around. Uh, it's usually maybe two or three levels depending on if it's a refinery or something like this which is more of a rest stop. So we have these elevators here which will get you to the mezzanine and get you to a place to, uh, to get to the HABs. Now while I was here, as soon as I came in through these elevators here after getting off my ship, I checked, uh, I went to go store my ship. So at one of the terminals here, I went to go store and I noticed that in the terminal there, something that I was almost certain I had done before I had started, there was an Aurora MR in there. Uh, and I've since then got the, the LN, uh, I believe is the other one, or is it the LX? I think it's the LX is the other one that I had. Um, so I don't know why it didn't show up at the terminal down in Lorville, but it showed up here. So I'm going to be using the MR right now. I believe there's five versions of the Aurora. There's the ES, the MR, the CL, the LN, and the LX. Uh, most of them are almost all identical. The only big difference is the CL. The CL is a, a cargo variant. The, the C there is for cargo. Uh, and it is uh, a little bit slower, I, but I think like five meters a second slower at max speed, but it does carry six SU of cargo. Uh, the LN, uh, I think it starts, stands for Legion, um, has a couple more weapons hard points, a little bit slower for flying, uh, and the MR is tends to be the fastest, but again, only about five meters a second faster, maybe 10 with the, the afterburner on. So they're all very similar. So whatever one I'm using is going to be very similar, especially for what I'm doing. Uh, with the exception of if I was running bounties with the LN, you do have a bit of an advantage there, or running cargo with the CL. But I will not be using the Aurora uh, for cargo. We're going to work our way up to doing cargo by potentially renting another ship. So we are now in Everest Harbor. Uh, a good place to stop if you don't want to, to stop in a city is to stop at a space station. There's always HABs in the space station. The one advantage of being in a space station is it's just so much quicker to get from the HAB to the ASOP terminal and get into one of your ships and get flying. So they're a lot easier, a lot faster to find your way around. You can see there's someone there and going in an the elevator, they're going to head out in their ship. Uh, wish I knew where they were because we could watch them take off. Potentially they're going to be coming out of a pad here. If I can see if there's any pads here. can't see any, so I can't necessarily see the ship. So that's all right. So we're going to go to the terminal here. Uh, I think if there is an MR there, I might as well grab the MR. And we are going to run our first... There we are. Run our first mission. Uh, something that does not pay well. Something that takes a bit of time. Doesn't pay a lot of money, but as far as learning how to fly, learning how to explore and get around, uh, we're going to do a box delivery mission. Something that you can do with practically any ship with an interior. Oh, someone's in here. Well, okay, I can't, well, you know what? This is annoying. And then we'll choose pad three after they left. They are in pad one. Hello. They are going.
going far. We are five kilometers away from our ship now. There, and pad one. Pad three, please. And we're going to be heading towards our ship. Oh, I should have looked to see what they were flying. So many elevators. Everyone seems to grab the closest ones, so quite often you're going to be in an elevator with other people. So we'll look around this elevator while we move. We're on our way there. It's very industrial looking. Double check. Good thing I checked. Uh, sometimes when you are in the game, if you are coming out of a hab, and I was in a hab for a moment there because I was uh, exiting to do something, uh, you don't have your helmet on when you wake up always make sure your helmet's on before you leave an elevator. If you're on Hurston, not a big deal, but on this location here, if I walked through this blue line here, or if I was in a ship that I got into a ship in Hurston and landed here and I got out of my ship, you would start suffocating immediately because right here, cold vacuum of space. So we are now safe wearing our helmets. You can see the uh, the sun is going behind the planet there. We can see some of the city down below. We're going to head over to the Aurora and get in. And we are going to decide what kind of delivery mission we're doing. Uh, I'll show you some of the other mission ideas that we can do or some of the mission types that we can do. But right now, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at a box delivery, the first basic mission that you can run in Aurora. It'll help you practice flying, landing, navigating, not a lot of fighting, so it's a good mission to start. So you hit F1 to bring up your Moby Glass, and we're going to be looking at the bottom here, Contracts Manager, and then we have Delivery. You do have Mercenary Missions, Bounty Hunter, some mason, uh, Maintenance Missions, Investigation. Investigation would be kind of interesting because those are the ones where we're going to be able to go to some caves. So if we have the Multi-Tool and Mining Attachment, Taking an investigation mission will allow you to make money mining while looking for a person that's been lost that you will then discover to earn a little bit of more money. Uh, I tend to get lost in caves though, but we can definitely give one of those a go. Uh, it'd be a good video to see me run around in circles, not knowing where I am. Uh, search missions um, is a new mission. I haven't done any of these, but it's going to a wrecked star fair and hoping to recover some items. But we're going to go to delivery. Delivery comes in basically two flavors. Pick up a bunch of packages and bring them in one location. Or go to one location and bring a bunch of packages back. Uh, and then there's some here where you're going to a place. So this one here, uh, usually you're going to an abandoned space station where you have to find the missing package and get it back. Uh, and you're basically, this one here, you cannot expose it to quantanium travel. So this one you have to uh, put it into the ship and fly without without warping pays 20,000 alpha UEC. We're going to have to try one of those later but I'm going to start with one of the basic ones pick up three different packages and bring them to a location. So we have Ariel, Aberdeen and Hurston. These are two moons in Hurston. This one here you're picking things up uh, on again from uh, a Lagrange point so a point in space and Hurston and one of the moons. This one here uh, two different Lagrange points and uh, Magda, which is another moon. Let's see if we can find one where a lot of the stuff is happening in the same location. Not really. This one is picking up uh, something on Magda, going to Ariel, Hurston, Eta. Ariel, Aberdeen, Hurston, Ariel. So this one's not bad because we're going to go to Hurston, which is right here. Then we're going to go to the moon Aberdeen. Then we're going to Ariel, which is one of the moons, and we're going to fly to a different location on Ariel and drop everything off. That one looks good. Pays 8,000 UEC. Now, if you look at that, push F1 to get out of here. Push R. I should have pushed R to begin with and get the shields charging while I was doing this. Um, 8,000 isn't a lot, but if you're thinking about how you normally start this game with 1,000 UEC, using my referral code gets you 5,000. 8,000, you'd be well on your way to getting the the Pembroke armor, which should help on a moon like Ariel, as well as uh, getting the, the multi-tool and starting your work. 
So now that we've done this, if we look around, we can see these blue markers, and those are pointing us to different locations to go. We're picking up a package here, we're picking up a package here, and we're picking up a package on Hurston. We're going to go do the Hurston package first, so you could request takeoff with the F11 or on here. It's always good to request takeoff so you're not causing an issue by taking off while other ships are coming in for landing. And now we're going to point towards the first package. So we're going to fly out of the range of the space station a bit. Oh, Whoa, wait a minute. Was I not even paying attention? There's a package to pick up in the space station. Well, I feel really silly that I didn't even notice that. So what I'm going to do is we're going to request a landing. We're going to go land our ship and pick up this package. So good thing I didn't really go anywhere uh, before we took off because taking a quick look, first package is actually very close. The first package is in fact on this space station. I, I wasn't really paying attention when I accepted the job where the package is. So I'm heading into the space station and we're going to go find this package which I believe will be in the mezzanine uh, in the uh, admin, admin, admin office. So I'll show you how to find the admin office if that's where it is. And we're going to go grab this package and we will actually be well on our way to completing our first mission. So right from the space station, the package, we've just passed it. It's about 100 meters away. We're going to see if we can locate this package. So once we get to the lobby, where is it? 274 meters away. It's not up there. I don't think we can get through it get to it through here, but I'm going to double check. Nope. So I think it's in admin. So we're going to, I can actually push F1, go to contracts. There we are. Accepted. So Everest Harbor just says Everest Harbor. I don't know why I wasn't really paying attention that we have one at Everest Harbor. Before I got in my ship, or actually it was already in my ship, but before I powered up my ship, let's go, oh, cargo center. That might have been it. I'm already at Galleria. We're going to check there first. Cargo center. Uh, cargo decks are relatively new. Something I haven't really looked at yet, so it's going to be kind of interesting. I haven't done any cargo running. Uh, how far is the package? 48 meters? It still might be here. So let's go check out the admin office, but then one of these days, check out the cargo decks. So it is an admin office. So the admin office, this yellow building here. We're going to open this door. And there we are. So five meters. These are the package pickup and drop off point. Sometimes packages will be sitting on shelves, but you drop them off at these locations. So we're going to click pickup. And our package will be produced and come out of this hole here. Hold F, click carry, and we now have our package. So we're going to head to hangars and habs. And then from there, we're going to get back to our ship. Hopefully still there. It's on pad three at the moment. If you are away from your ship for too long, the game will uh, store your ship for you. Here we are. I know my helmet is on, so we're good to go. We're running out to our ship. The sun has gone around the other side of the planet now, so it's a little bit darker. So I've left my door open. Try not to do that with most ships, but with the Aurora, not so bad because you can tell that no one is currently uh, hiding in your ship since we are in the entire interior of the ship. So once you have your package in your ship, don't place drop, uh, don't hit drop, hit place. That way you're able to aim where you're, you're putting your package and you can stick it somewhere a little more solid where you want. Get into our pilot seat. I've placed the package there on the bed at the moment, but that's fine. And now the ship, we're going to get ready to go. It is still running, so not so bad. Uh, we're going to try to decide where we want to get our next package from. If you hit F2, you can see the the location of other packages by mouse wheeling out. Uh, we know we have one here on Ariel, and we have one... Oh, that's the drop-off point is on Ariel. We have one on Aberdeen. So if I click Aberdeen and set route, we are now aimed at Aberdeen, so we really, when we push P, or B, we only have the one point. And we can see on our radar, there's a kind of an arrow kind of helping us out that we're going to be heading up here to Aberdeen. So let's 
calibrate towards there, hold down B, and we are on our way, 67,000 kilometers, we'll be there in no time in this zippy little ship, flying towards our next pickup. So once we get to our pickup, you basically land, or you basically stop in orbit around, you can see there's some various broken space station around here. This is cool. Oh, I want to go fly. I'm going to go check this out. You know what? I can't. I can't be distracted. I can't be distracted. We're on a job. We're working, but I really want to check that out. Hit B again, and we're going to go towards our package. It's still almost 600 kilometers away, so if I warp there, it'll bring me into the planet's atmosphere and about 30 kilometers away. I really want to check out that space station. That is something I've never seen before. Uh, I don't really come to this moon, at least not in a long while, so I haven't seen that. Just things with this game, everything catches me off guard. I've been here f playing for so long and I've never seen that before. So we are on the dark side of this moon. It's not going to be very bright, we're not really going to be able to see what we're doing. So one of the things to do when coming in for a landing is I'm going to rotate so I face the right way, I'm going to hit L. L turns ship lights on. That will make a huge difference when I'm coming in for landing. So we are now 22 kilometers away. I've moused up a little bit in order to, to speed up my landing to get there a little bit faster. And what I'm doing is I'm just kind of flying directly at the point. Uh, when I get a little bit closer, I'll maybe slow down a bit, get ready to land. Uh, on daytime, it's a little bit easier because in daytime you can see the ground and you can see if there's any mountains or rocks kind of obstructing your view. But at the, this point, I'm so far away, I'm not really worried because I'm still fairly high up. Uh, if you start to see things in your lights on the ground at night, you know you're getting a little bit closer. So we're now about maybe halfway there, we're about 10 kilometers out, and we're just slowly going to mouse back a little bit. This ship slows down quite quick, but if you're in something like a, a caterpillar or a larger ship like that, it's always good to remember to, to slow down. We're also going to hit N, and hitting N will lower the landing gear so that I'm not going to forget when I get to the landing point. Now you could land on any of the landing pads here, but also uh, with this little ship you can land right next to the building that you're going to be picking up a package in so you have less distance to run. So we can see the lights now of the, uh, the place we're going to be picking up. So we're going to slow down a little more as we get closer. There's also a rock you can see has come up on the just maybe down to the, the right a bit. Uh, if you're looking for mineables, that's a symbol for something you can mine with a mole or prospector. Mouse down a little more. Here we're going to be picking up in this pack, uh, this building right here. So I'm going to fly over this first one. And there's the ramp. So if I spin around a bit. Well, I'm not used to a ship that ro rolls so quickly. So I could hit F4 and make sure that I'm in a, a good position to land. But I feel pretty confident here regardless. So hit I to turn off my engines, hold Y. I'm going to get out of my ship. Open my door, and there's the ramp. So instead of landing on the, ra the landing on the landing pad, I'm right in, ready to go. Grab package number two, which will be through this door, and this one just sitting on a shelf. Grab this package. They're usually brightly colored. A lot of times have lights on them. Quite easy to see. Quite easy to find. Hit open, cycle the airlock, and we are coming on out. Now if you look here on the bottom corner, you can see the temperature is dropping or is rising. It's at 100 degrees, 116 degrees, 132 degrees, and it's my estimate for time of survival is at 12 minutes, a minute and 57, uh, 11 minutes 56, 11 minutes 55. That is because the suit I'm wearing does not protect me from hot 
location. So if I was wearing the Pembroke suit, uh, it would be a lot less of effect and I could last a lot longer. So that's the importance of having a spacesuit for specific conditions. Some might help you with firefights, some might help you with cold temperatures, some might help you with hot temperatures. That is where you notice on the bottom corner how effective your current suit is to help you out. So we're now going to enter the ship. Same as last time, you notice the temperature is dropping now that I'm in my ship. I'm going to hit place. I'm going to, maybe i got to rotate a bit. Hit, hit place. And I can put this down on the floor. There we are. Package secure. Get into my pilot seat. Now remember I turned engines off, so hit I to turn them back on. And now we're going to pick up our last package. And our last package, if we hit F2 and look, I believe is the same place as our drop-off. So yes, so not the, not the exact same place. Oh, I made a mistake there. Drop-off and pick up. But they are both on aerial, which is another hot location. So I'm going to set the route there. Again, you don't need to necessarily set the route because with delivery packages, you're looking at the uh, the symbol showing up, this this box showing up. So it's always giving you an, uh, a point. Now, if I try to warp here, you notice it's red because I am too low. I need to exit the atmosphere. So you want to head straight up. Don't forget to mouse up if you've moused down to slow down so that you're not going to take forever leaving the planet's atmosphere. With moons, fairly quick that I should be able to soon. Can I yet? No, nope, not yet. Uh, it doesn't take you long to get out of the atmosphere of a moon. In fact, I am there now. So unlike the planet, that's a very quick, easy thing to, to get out. So same with when we're doing our drop-off. It's not going to take us long to go between pickup and drop-off drop -off point. Holding B, we are now heading towards Ariel, about the same distance away as Magda, I believe, which is where we just were. Ariel is a great place when you get into mining with the rock. If you say have a, a nomad or the cutlass or something, and you got a, or even just a rock, and you go and pick it up on the planet's surface, it's a pretty awesome place to be. A pretty awesome place to find hadonite, which is a great, expensive gem that you can mine to make some quick money. So that's something we're going to be aim for is to stop doing package deliveries and start doing rock mining as soon as possible to make the money to make our goal. So I'm going to hold down B and this I believe is going to be on the sun side. It'll be the hot side of the planet. So we'll keep going. This planet is a pretty awesome, pretty beautiful planet I think. Uh, very barren for the most part with like lava and rocks but different types of terrain. I'm really imp impressed with how different most of the places are. Uh, I think Damar is another great one to like drive around in because the gravity is just right I find for like having fun driving around some of the trucks. So this here, very hot, arid, sandy areas. We're going to rotate using Q or E, upright. We don't need our lights on to land here because it is so bright. As you can see, we're quite high up, making our way towards uh, our last pickup. Here we are coming towards our last pickup. You can see a lot of the rocky terrain, so not as easy to, to land larger ships if you're doing some mining here, but for little ships like the Aurora, you can pretty much go wherever you want. We're gonna head towards this building again. Look for the for the ramp to get in. I believe it's gonna be on the side where this landing pad is. So if that's the case, we may as well just land on the landing pad. It'll be quick and easy to get in. Is that where the entrance is? Maybe not. We're going to land on the landing pad anyways. Quick and easy. N. Lower your landing gear. Control. Bring us all the way down. I. Engines off. Hold Y. Getting out of our ship. And we got one more package to go. There we go. Another package to grab. go grab this place maybe we'll put it on top of the other box perfect they're all going the same place doesn't really matter they kind of bounce around they figured it out perfect like a glove 
Remember, engines are off. Engines are now on. And we don't really need to set a destination. We know where we're going. It's on this planet. So, so hitting B, you can see the points have turned blue. So now we know we're, we're good to go. We're going to find again our drop-off point. There it is. It's 558 kilometers away. It looks like I'm aiming at the planet. Once I hold B, you'll see that it knows to not go straight through in a straight line, but to fly us around the planet. Such fast speeds. You can see here how fast we're moving around the planet. So much better than flying at a regular speed, and it knows to slow down and stop before you get to where you're going. So we'll just kind of enjoy this view as we head to our last destination to drop off our packages. So we're about five kilometers away, four kilometers away, coming up on our last destination and our mission will be complete. And this will be our first mission. Now, if you were delivering different packages, different locations, you would have to look at what package is going where. And the way to tell that is, looking at the packages, this one ends in a 2.8, this one ends in a 05, this one ends in an 8.1, and you would see deliver, these are all kind of over themselves right now, so you can't really read them, but it would tell you which package you're going to deliver. But since there's three in one location, uh, you can't really see the names over there. Also, it doesn't really matter uh, because they're all going the same one. Just grab one and head in to deliver. So I've got all three packages now and you'd think that you bring them to this gentleman here, but that is not the case. What we're going to do is we're going to bring them to this delivery person, the delivery box, I should say. So you select drop off, as you can see here, and we're just going to take each one and place them into the receptacle. So box one placed. Little thumbs up. So we're good to go. Carry our next one. Drop off. Choose place. Second box. Might as well pick up the third while we wait. This one here, wait for a little thumbs up. Have a good day, thank you, transaction complete. And then our last one, place, place it in there. And now we're going to watch at the top of our screen. Because if we look here, total money right now, remember, 3,108. Objective complete, deliver package. Contract, we got 8,000 UEC, so if we hit F1, look at that, 11,108, our first mission complete. So that is it, we've run our first mission. You've learned how to fly, you've learned how to land, you've learned how to navigate and get around, uh, learned how to use the contract manager, and I think that is where we're going to end it. I'm going to head back to my ship, left the door open so I can just jump in, a little bit quicker than using the ladders and climbing in. I'm going to head back to to Lorville. It's been a long day. I've delivered, I've put in my hours, I've done some work, and I think I'm going to call it here. I think that is a successful start. Uh, maybe we're going to try a different mission next time. I'm going to take you through uh, one of the hand mining operations. So maybe we'll even try one of the, uh, the search missions. However, I can almost guarantee doing a search mission I will either get lost or not find the person. Uh, but We'll see, we'll see how that goes. Maybe we'll start with just hand mining around the entrance of a mine and show you how hand mining works, and we'll work towards that. So that is it. I hope to see you again in the verse. Until next time, have a good evening, have a good day, wherever you are.